Hey, what's going on, everybody? You know, a little hiatus, but we're right back to it. The uh, Mere Musk episode interview, Tom Myers. Tom, you know, you were a guest that we had to have on because you just have so much knowledge. You're very intricate. You have a lot of things going on. There's a, you know, there's a huge background back history about you also. And we just want to dive into all sorts of things with you tonight. I just want to say thank you for coming on today. Well, I appreciate a couple things. First off, for uh, reading the not for not only reading the script that I gave you, which is the precondition <laughs> of me coming on, of but also delivering it with the perfect inflection as well. So, uh, yeah, that was you, you've you've met all you've you've met all my preconditions. So right. let's do an interview. Let's do an interview, buddy. So. Child, and, you want to start off with it? Yeah, Mir, that was a little vague. For people who don't know, I, I assume a lot of people do know who Tom is, but he is a comedian. Uh, I guess you could call him a political pundit, maybe a p- political enthusiast and uh, all around kind of entertain entertainer guy. So um, he he like we uh, like often have on this show, we have comedians and he knows some of our former guests are um and runs in the same circle. So we can get into all that, where he began in comedy, how he got to where he's at. And then maybe we'll touch in on some of the political landscape going on right now because it is an election year. So we yep. can kind of get some opinions on that too. So, uh, yeah, like uh, Mir said, welcome, Tom. And uh, maybe we can get off and just start kind of give it people who don't know the basics. Like, wh- where did you start doing comedy and about how long ago? Now, I've been doing this for more than 20 years. Uh, I'd always been into comedy, like specifically uh, the stand-up, because I remember as a little kid, my, uh, my obviously family uh, watched like, stand-up comedy performances on television, or they would have they would have video cassettes. I'm dating myself now of, right. uh, of, of very famous uh, comedians, and I w- I just remember being enthralled by them, watching them, thinking. Wow, one person is standing on a stage and this commanding a whole uh, the, the attention of a whole room of people. I just found that fascinating, and I just said to myself, at, at a young age, that's pretty much what I uh, what I what I want to do. And I grew up in a family where I had two siblings, a sister and a brother, both about a decade older than me. So they were going through their uh, teenage crap at the time, at the time I was trying to get some attention for myself. So right through your adolescence, like most people who go into show business, it's like the need for, uh, the need for attention. Like right. I, I'm, I'm that, that something is definitely very wrong with me that I, <laughs> I have, I have the need that right. I have the need for this. And, um, I'll give you the Cliff's notes version in, uh, in high school, uh, about, now how rough it is. Um, like I started uh, just in, in order to avoid getting the shit beat out of me in school. I started reciting street jokes from this, these little desk calendars that uh, my dad used to have. Mm-hmm. And uh, that would that would make that would make these guys like, you know, football players, like really big, burly weightlifting guys kick my ass. And they ended up liking them so much that I got to hang with them like i was the only underclassman who got to hang with these guys just goof off fuck around during during gym class we would play hacky sack while everybody was doing all the the stuff that the uh that the gym teachers made him do right, right so right. um then i started uh writing my own stuff uh like college coffee house type deals uh talent shows at school uh open mics in the baltimore dc area where i i still live Okay. Um, eventually going on the road and just uh, regionally, then nationally. And long story short, I do a, uh, a politics based uh, podcast. I will say that the uh, the podcast itself is more uh, is more political. Okay, it's more and uh, is more political. But my act, the stage act, not so political. Like the, okay. the previous CD that I put out, uh, it has only like eight minutes of like eight minutes out of the whole hour is politics. So, what kind of inspired your politics? Like what kind of got you? Brought, you want to make that bring that into something? Uh, my family has always been very politically aware. 
Okay. Like, I remember like one of the earliest memories I had was uh, uh, was the, the first Gulf War and okay. the the Clinton Bush election, and I just remember uh, my parents differing very uh, politically. So there were lots of discussions. Like there was there are some staunch Democrats on my in, in my family as well as some staunch Republicans. So basically, like all the arguing that you see on cable news shows, like imagine your fucking in your family room happening. I right grew now. up with that. Yeah, it was like yeah. I, I got to watch it. Uh, I, I I got to watch it live. With, right, right. With, with, with no commercial breaks. Right. So how, how how like I would say I guess it never really affected your parents' relationship overall, you know, that difference in politics. You know, sometimes it does to some extent in some families, but I'm sure your parents held it together with their differences in views. Well, not quite. They've uh, not quite. They split when I was twelve. My dad <laughs> left <laughs> Oh shit, my, okay. My, my, my uh oh yeah, absolutely hilarious. My dad left uh, Christmas when I was twelve. It was great. Yeah, uh, but, but no, I mean everybody. We we all get along together now. It's it's uh, it's kumbaya. Uh, Christmas yeah, isn't yeah, you know much. all all water under the bridge. And ironically enough, like my dad, like when I was growing up, he was like Mister Republican, like yeah. Mister Fiscal Conservative, strong military because he was in the army for thirty years. Right, right. So of course he was uh, into in, into all that. And then like he's from what I remember, he supported like Bush and all the way up through Mitt Romney. Right. But then when Donald Trump ran for president and some of the shit he was saying about the he was saying about the military, some of the stuff, he could not abide by the fact that he was supporting him. I don't yeah, know if yeah. he ever voted for Hillary Clinton or Joe Biden, but I do know that he didn't support uh, Trump. Vote for Trump. Yeah. I mean, we live in Maryland, which is a pretty strong democratic right. state. So it's it not like a stronghold. Really matter, but yeah, right. it's the uh, but but yeah. So um, okay and so you kind of implemented that aspect of your childhood into your uh podcast when it comes to political comedy so are you kind of what would you say your political comedy is though because i mean there's differences like seth Meyers does some of it right do you kind of cover news stories what, what, what how would you describe your political podcast the political podcast is is basically the the top news stories of the day okay. mixed with social issues and even just random topics that I find in the news that I want to discuss. Like I did, I did an AI episode. Uh, I did an episode about spring break. Right. right, uh, right. So it was just like, like fun stuff as well, just to break up the monotony of things. Okay. Like the, uh, the episode that just dropped today, we covered uh, uh, super Tuesday, all the elections that took all the primary contests that took place. Yep. And I, I'm calling it the unofficial kickoff of the, Biden Trump rematch that we knew was going to happen. The trifecta. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's that start was like, okay. You're right. Right. Eight months of this shit. Let's go. <laughs> Do you guys ever kind of uh, bring on guests of other political views or anything? Or you guys kind of just stay within your talking points and then push forward with what the crowd wants to hear? Do you ever have some, you know? Um, I, I try, I like to try and have a, a diverse panel as possible i mean not just in terms of like you know more women more people of color um right. i try and have some uh, I, I am trying to get some conservative voices on there but I, I i don't necessarily want conservative voices that parrot stuff that's already been disproven like if, what if, if that if that makes any sense like if someone comes in and says, well, well, look at all this stuff they did during the 2020 election that proves it was oh, stolen. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. no, no, it, 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 it wasn't. Or if they come on and, and say a whole bunch of stuff about like the COVID vaccine, that's been, that's been disproven. Disproven, you're right. Like, yeah, like that's kind of like, no, 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 no wing are, Right, yeah. right. You got to say a little bit more fresh, you know, it's, it's just repetitive talking points that no one gives a fuck about anyway anymore. You know. Right. Yeah. And we will often like disagree amongst uh, ourselves. Like we did a Israel Palestine episode, like right after the right after the war started. Yep. Yep. Uh, well, How was of, that? Uh, it, it was an it was a fun episode to do, believe it or not. I mean, it was it got, it, it can get a little heated just because of the situation, just because of the situation. Uh, like one of our uh, one of our my regular panelists, a guy named uh, Jeff Heisen, like yeah. he's strong, like pro israel you know they were they were attacked which which they were 
Right. And then, you know, you, you have someone else on who's, you know, strongly pro Palestinian. So it's, you know, you don't have, you don't necessarily have to have a, uh, a, 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 a you know, like, you know, an AOC versus, you know, uh, Ben well, Shapiro type on just right. to have, a discussion. <laughs> you can have, uh, you, you can have not so much infighting, but you can have a little, uh, friendly discussion, uh, among, amongst our, amongst our own crew. Right. I, mean, I was going to say, I was kind of interested with like all the Jewish hate going on right now in the U.S. towards Israel in support of Palestine, uh, Palestine and how much, uh, I'd say, media attention they're getting. Yeah. I thought USA, for the most part, is pro-Israel, you know? Always found I mean, that. well, yeah, I mean, we, we, we have been for the most part. Um, but I think, and, and I believe this, this should happen as well, like there should be... a, a a two state solution because you know the Palestinians were there, they had their land, so they need they, they do need to, uh, they, they do have the right to exist and they should, you know, it peacefully, peacefully with uh, with Israel being there, right? And but not with uh, not with a, not with a group like Hamas because they're basically a, a terrorist organization, right? Because they they went ahead and executed the attack on the uh, uh on Israel on, on October 7th. So Israel does have the right to defend itself, but they are not doing it very well. With the genocide, well, the genocide they're committing, I guess, or whatever they want to call it. And, and you have people like you have Bernie Sanders and, and Chuck Schumer. They're, they're Jewish coming right. out and saying, Hey, that what Israel is doing to the Palestinian, the, the innocent Palestinian civilians who you know they're just trying to they're just trying to live their lives it's it's wrong and you know it it, it something needs to something needs to happen there's too many videos of a baby's burning and dying in buildings all right we got to do something <laughs> it's getting yeah. a little too you know insane but tom i want to dive into you though also more about your comedy scene your comedy and whatnot so right. i kind of want to go back to your your beginnings of comedy so how did you kind of like start developing your craft and I would say your uh, theme that you would go with your comedy? Like what what kind of inspired you besides the political aspect that really kind of sharpened your, I would say, mindset into comedy? You know what I'm saying? Well, I, like I said, it was the attention grabbing aspect of it. And from day one to day 365 times 20, however many fucking days i've been doing this like everything is just if i think if i think something's funny then i'll go ahead and use it on stage okay uh, if the audience likes it great if they don't like it okay so i retool it and fix it and if the audience likes the way i retool it and fix it great if not uh okay i either rework it or i scrap it and put it away and just let it sit on right. ice for a you don't use the same joke in in, in in different specials like ray does so i understand what you're saying <laughs> right yeah mm -hmm. well that that's a, sorry i kept jumping in and out can you hear me all right mir and tom yeah you're you're perfect yeah, yeah. all right awesome. good yeah um yeah no so you're you're based out of baltimore i don't i, I missed some of your talk i i kind of caught some of it as political but one of the things about you that I've seen in your, i'm a little more familiar with your comedy you're very prolific with your material like you put out something and you release it, and you got you've got a lot of uh, albums, right? Uh, four. Like oh, you put three, out four three, albums. Three, three, three live albums, and one, uh, stu and one quote unquote studio. It was a, co a compilation of me riffing on news stories on another podcast. So, okay. yeah, so yeah, the, and then what? What's the process for you to like write a joke and? Are you are you like a pen and paper type guy, or is it kind of like you, it comes to you um, in the flow of a day, or what? What what's your process? I am a pen, I'm not only a pen and paper type guy. I am a notebook type guy. Hey, there it you go. Like the, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see I have the special. Uh, I, I have the 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 2024 edition Tom yeah. Myers joke book available. available <laughs> I can't wait to read that. Comedy thing. joke books <laughs> and like everything is is in here. I've got. Uh, I've got a couple boxes full of notebooks just like this, and and I used to write them down on scraps of paper, but I find just keeping the book is uh, it's more proficient, a lot easier. Yeah, right. And like I, I keep uh, whether it's for the stage 
or for the podcast, because some that work for the stage don't necessarily work for the podcast and vice versa. Like I keep it all here and I go ahead and type everything up into my uh, like scripts for the podcast or punch it up onto my set lists. And uh, as I remember, um, uh, uh, Shuli Agar, I guess that, uh, that you had on one time. Yep. Yes. He once said that he likes to set aside a couple hours a day where he's okay. This time, this time, I'm going to sit down and write. I don't know if it's me or my brain or the fact that whatever is in my head is completely fucked up beyond all recognition, yeah. but I can't do that. Like, I have to, like, if I'm my really writing study. process, is, my writing process is nonstop. Right. And it's throughout the day. And if I think of something, I'll write it down or I'll just record it into my phone and just record it as a voice thing and then transfer it to the book later. I'm a little more neurotic about it than I probably should be, but it's, Hey, it's, it's you're successful for it. So, I mean, well, I don't know about that. I mean, I'm, I mean, you're not homeless, so it's working. <laughs> well, hey. you know what I'm saying? No, but that's the thing. Some, some guys say like, Oh, I write on stage. Some people say, Hey, I dedicate, I dedicate <laughs> yeah, a time not. to journal. And then it, I come up with a bit. And then you got people like Ray DeVito who just watches a Bill Burr special. And then, or a Mark Norman special, and he just changes the order of the joke and then says it in his special, right? Well, he he does write on stage, you know. <laughs> he just says, okay, should which comedian's joke should I use for this one? No. For legal, reason, <laughs> for legal reasons, I have to say Ray DeVito does not steal jokes to the best of my knowledge. So, yes, yes. Uh, With well, parentheses I, on that. One of, his, one of his most popular jokes is just reordered it's a bill burr joke about uh how a rescue dog is basically you got you got some shit for free is what he says but it's basically a bill burr joke where he's talking about how he hates when people call uh a rescue dog a rescue dog so yeah you you you, you see that where people are inspired by others and then they try to rework it and that that happens you know there's only so much material that's timely in the zeitgeist but uh the, the the art of creating it testing it out and doing it it's got to be the most rewarding part of comedy wouldn't you say absolutely and like i've done something where if i if i'll tell a joke and then someone will come up to me and if, if they'll come up to me and they'll say hey it sounds like this comics joke or this or whatever um i'll just i'll, I'll just take it out because I don't want to be accused of you know, joke theft or anything like that. And uh, if, if, if I've done it you know, a, a bunch of times, people come to me and say, hey, it sounds like this person's joke. Like, oh, shit, this one really worked. And I, you know, you just have to, it, you, you just got to bite the bullet sometimes. There's some, know. there's some then to that too, because it's like at its essence, comedy should, there should be a core of like, 50 jokes that all comedians can use if they're going on the road, but the internet and the permanence of joke telling has changed that where everyone wants to have ownership of like something. Cause back in the day, right? Like comedians would go town to town and tell the same jokes. Maybe uh, all popular, the comics. Yeah. Yeah. So it was like yeah. an act that everyone kind of shared and it was just meant to entertain that group that night. And now everyone has to be an artist and everyone has to have their own, voice and all this type so there is probably a middle ground in it where it's like yeah you want to be unique but at the same time you want to be relatable and funny but yeah. at the same time uh you know it's like there there's something to that too so i'm not i'm not and, here to call out ray on on stealing no, premises no, no. either because it, it's just how I it is actually I've, I've never taken the time to uh i've never taken the time to see him perform so but uh, I, I will say, I will say is that like uh, some jokes are similar. Often it's just based on like, the premise. Like, like you can't copyright and say, oh, I claim dibs on this premise about airline food or I are on uh, Tinder. I, I claim I hold on all Tinder jokes and don't anybody tell any Tinder jokes because I own them. Like, no, I'm, I'm not like that. But it's, it's the punchline and one's perception that makes the the comics take unique on it in, in from from my understanding of it now where are you uh where you perform i because when ray was on he was mentioned he performs at the stand and he says you perform over there too right whenever i'm in town yeah okay. i don't 
I, I only get up there. Like I said, I'm in, in Baltimore. I only, I only get up there uh, a couple times a year, uh, a couple times a year. In fact, I, in fact, I've been so swamped with stuff here with the, the podcast and I have a, a side gig. I do public address announcing for youth yeah. baseball games. So it's, which is a great, it's, it's a great release. If you want to, if you're, if you're so immersed in comedy and podcasting that you want to get away from it, it's like normal. <laughs> when can I get away from comedy? God damn it. Like I, I get to, I sit and I get to watch, I get to watch baseball. I get to announce names. I get to, uh, I, I get to play music in between innings, the music I want. I get to watch sports and talk into a microphone and right. get paid for it. So you're living the dream have, then. <laughs> I don't have the best life, but I'm doing pretty damn good. So. Uh, have you and Ray ever shared the stage at all in your guys' careers? I have never, to my knowledge anyway, I never performed on the same like stage that? with them. But I've done, I've done so many shows that I got... Uh, a few months ago, I was doing a show. It was outside the Baltimore area, and uh, and someone came up to me and said, "Don't you remember me? I performed with you on a stage in 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 2017." Like, I I I can't even remember what I had for breakfast this morning. Like, right. I don't I, I don't keep I'm not I don't have a photographic memory. My 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 brain ain't ain't good like that. <laughs> yeah, I I suppose especially when you're with so many different comics and it's like hard to even know who what you were on that night much less ever so um yeah no that's a that's the thing with comedy so what what's your uh are you are you trying i know you're getting in the swing of things with the pa announcing but have you been doing any touring as of late i have not like i said the podcast is the podcast keeps me busy and i enjoy doing it uh so my my writing muscles have been have been getting been getting a good exercise and been getting a good workout because I try and write on average like th uh, three jokes a day for a particular for a particular week. So I try and set myself mm. a, a goal for that. Right. Uh, and if if I can find one, it's it's easier for me to write jokes for the podcast than it is for. Uh, the stage because stage audiences they're a lot more like the live shows they're a lot more demanding than someone who sits down and and listens to a podcast obviously right, right. um <clears throat> so you know i i do that i i work i get some workout stuff there um but th that doesn't mean to say that i've been doing I, I haven't been doing comedy at all uh i've been getting a good uh, uh comedy workout on some uh, virtual or hybrid shows rather uh run by a uh, comic out of los angeles named dat fan uh, he yeah. was the original winner of uh last comic standing okay. uh he does like uh, <clears throat> comedy coaching in addition to doing like movies and, and tv shows uh he set up a hybrid uh zoom show which zoom comedy took a lot of shit just because of the, the nature of, of things like yeah. Uh, but if it's if the if a Zoom show is run well, then the show works, and it's an excellent gauge of how <clears throat> of how one's uh, how how one's jokes work. With with most Zoom shows, I see it where like once the comic's done performing, they'll shut their camera off and just go away and and make dinner or something. And if it, a, a, someone says a joke, they like they'll rush over the computer, like ah ha ha oh oh. oh. And but with uh, Dat fans <laughs> Zoom shows, they're not like that. Everybody keeps their cameras on, like they keep them steady, like no walking around with your phone stuff like right, that. Right, right. And as a result, the shows work. And the uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the uh, the shows that I've been doing, oddly enough, since COVID, I've had a lot more confidence in them just because I have more. I, I I have the baseline where I'm, I'm able to work. I'm able to work jokes out. Do you have any rowdy road stories by any chance when you've done comedy on the road? You ever got really rowdy at all? Or are you more of a lean keen kind of guy back in the day? Oh, I I would not know how to do a clean set to save my life. Okay, uh, okay. No, I'm so you're not. You're pretty dirty. You get you you know you're all about the women, the drugs, the vibe, that rock and roll. <laughs> 
right? Yeah, man. I tell you what, I'm all I'm all about the party life. I'm sitting right here in a in a hoodie. I've got ginger got ale, ginger ale right here, <laughs> yeah, buddy. As soon as I'm done, I'm backing that. I'm chasing that with a bottle of Deer Park, motherfucker. Yeah. So you so I, I, I was I was a pretty serious uh, drinker back in the day. Okay. Uh, and but I uh, gave I gave that up in sober twelve years. My last drop of alcohol was December thirtieth, twenty eleven. Uh, gave it up and honestly never felt any better. Like I feel, I feel great about myself. I think that between that and doing the thing, like the podcast and the baseball announcing, like I, I, I find that my, my mental health is a lot better. Okay. Yeah. Than 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 some of my, uh, peers, my colleagues, you have like an inner peace about you, you know, and you're just like, okay. You're just yeah, yeah. we were talking about this before we went live a little bit. And yeah, you you tend to find probably a good balance between the things and then having the clear mindedness of sobriety, uh, especially for when you get a couple years under your belt like you have. But uh, did you notice at uh, when you change when you went from um, <clears throat> using or drinking to stopping a big shift in like the type of com any anything in your comedy? uh at that point, really? Because at that point, you've probably been already doing it like five to ten, eight, eight to ten years, maybe, right? Did you? Yeah. I mean, I had done, I, I'd been doing road gigs from, I'd say about late 05 to mid 06, something of, along that time to about, uh, uh, about, about 2013. I took a little bit of a break and then I started back up in 2016. I was getting ready to gear up in, in 2020 uh long story short that gear up came to a crashing halt right and yeah you know, i'm slowly starting to get back into the uh get back into the swing of things like okay. I'm, I'm starting to feel more comfortable around crowds that aren't wearing masks again so right. you know <laughs> hey man as long as you're vaccinated you're well, all right okay it's funny because I, 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 I i got my shots Nice. I, yeah, I, I know yeah. there's a, there's a, um, I have some theories on comedians and I think there's some that get into it just to drink. Like, yeah. you know, <laughs> it, it's a lifestyle, <laughs> you know, like going out to the bar every night it's work, but it's also like you get to drink every night's part of your job. And I think there's some that are just like poon hounds who are chasing, uh, chicks from town to town. They're maybe like really into that. So they get, they work on their bravado and get like, I don't know if you know Dalia, but uh, like he was kind of known for that yeah, type of shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 like the, the, you couldn't. I could not be described as a poon hound during. No, my, my, no. Like I'll put it this way: I, I was a hound, but I had no sense of smell, so I couldn't <laughs> find me. No. <laughs> Are you getting any uh, groupies from your podcast at all? At all? Because we we get we get hoes hitting us up all the time, bro. Yeah, I love hoes. I mean, <laughs> just yeah, for our podcast. I mean, listen, when when you do a whole episode about the E. Jean Carroll verdict against Donald Trump, like, <laughs> man, I'm swimming in poontang after that. <laughs> I mean, dude, leftist bitches are fucking crazy in bed, bro. I bet you fucking fillet <laughs> that tranny pussy, bro. <laughs> um, yeah, no, no, that's the thing. Like, you gotta. You gotta find that right that right niche of uh for getting hoes these days because everyone's online <laughs> doing their shit, you know. So but the way the way you I, I'm sorry, but the way with that accent, the way you said getting hoes, it was just like you were you just sounded like the nicest gangster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's yeah, amazing. exactly. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, that just that just that just made me laugh. To you should use bro. that on stage. Oh no! Oh, oh. <laughs> Stop it! Tell me what I hate. Speaking, speaking of the hoes, I was going to ask you. Can you give me a? I want you to pick a, um, a this or that on the on this. So who 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 are you taking uh for for a date? Uh, Lauren Bobbert or Alexandria Casio Cortez? Ooh, dude, she's bad. Believe it or not, I'm. B believe it or not, I'm taking Lauren Bobert. 
Okay. Not for not for the reason not for the reason you're thinking, but it's like I I do like I said I do like to I like to keep the crazies off my podcast, but it's like I do want to get a little more uh, into her mindset. Okay, you want to just, yeah. you, know, you want to dive right in and just dissect her. What if it's not yeah. even like a date? It's just like a sixty minute, you know, at the motel. You still you still got her for the you know. A freak in the sheets. <laughs> You're going with yeah, Bobert. <laughs> I, she'll probably put it on Instagram Live and invite Ted Cruz in to do a podcast while she's doing it. So uh, no, uh, uh-uh, no, not not that. No, I mean just to like just to sit down and talk. Believe it or not, yeah. So I just want to ask something a little bit off base here, Tom, because I'm not as a uh, I would say. Uh, well versed in you as dr chow is so if you could just humor me for a second here Mm -hmm. ray was on our show last he said when he was talking to you you know there was like he thought you were always in on the joke that's what he said and then when he Mm -hmm. had you on his show he suddenly realized oh shit this guy doesn't know he's on the he's in on the joke he thinks you know i'm saying i just kind of want to clarify that with you what does he mean by that that you you know that you don't know that you're in on the joke what does that kind of mean? I, I never mean, got that. well, fr- from what I understand uh, about from from what I understand about uh, Ray, he wouldn't know a joke if he saw it in a Bill Burr special. So I'd say <laughs> right. that's pretty that's pretty suspect. But no, sorry, Ray. But uh, um, I, I I'd love to know exactly what joke he he think. I think in the context of what you were talking to him about, because I think because like I said, they. I was, I said this before we went online. I rarely, if ever, like try and get on like podcasts for like whenever I hear stuff about me. But th- that particular clip that uh, I was sent, uh, it it triggered me. So I reached out to I reached out to Mir, uh, congratulated him on well, congratulate you know you guys on the way you. You handled uh, you handled Ray when he sort of spiraled as soon as you uh, <laughs> as soon as you brought up my name. So, right. um, like in the context of what you were talking about, sorry, I'm, I go off on these tangents. No, no, do your thing, buddy. Um, like he seems to think that uh, you were talking about how like he like a lot of people were trolling him. Yeah, he thought we were in, trolling him too in the dabble verse and all. Yeah. But I mean, and like, everybody's everybody's got that it doesn't matter how good you are right you know bill burr has got trolls like lenny bruce had trolls except his trolls were called the new york city police department <laughs> the Chicago police department the los angeles police department the court system uh but um lost my thought. but well you know i i get them as well right and yeah I'm well, I'm well aware that i that i get trolls well, but in I, context to that, sorry to interrupt. I remember no. him saying that it was because you guys were at the stand one night and everyone at Legion of Skanks, all the like high up comics that he looks up to were like, oh, we got to go watch Tom because you have like this cult following amongst other comedians who want to come see you. Right. So I think it was a little bit of jealousy out of his thing because like no one's ever wanted to come see him. And and he was referencing this one night at the stand where you were performing at Frantic and everyone wanted to come see you and you had built up this like kind of cult following from other podcasts talking about you so to him he thought like he was in on something i don't know like he he couldn't even explain it because he's not good at that but he thought he ultimately was saying like he was way above you for some reason which made no sense (laughs) did you kind of gather that too tom like the way he was talking about it the way who was talking about it about ray that was that was uh <coughs> that was a ground ball i had to field it and throw it the first there you go. It you're out <laughs> <laughs> um I, I will say this like I, I will admit i do i do have trolls but i'd say like for every troll that i have there's probably a bunch of people uh who uh, comment or who follow me, who actually uh, like what I do. I mean, I, I legit hope that 
for Ray's sake, that he has a similar type of thing as well, where he has people who uh, legitimately enjoys seeing him for his comedy. Mm-hmm. Um, I wish no, no uh, ill will towards him yeah. on that. It's just like what he said triggered me. But I often found that when people listen to uh, certain podcasts, when they shit on me or talk bad about me, they'll come and see me and they'll be like, oh, okay, he's this, he's not, he's not so bad. Not my favorite comedian. I'm not asking to be your favorite comedian. I know I'm not, you know, the greatest comedian in the world. I've never, <laughs> this is what Ray says in his bio, he says he's edgy. I never called myself edgy. Like, you know, I've, I, I've, I've always tried to just say, Hey, you know, come out and see me. You might have a good time. If you don't tell someone you hate about me or something, if you want to <laughs> uh, torture them, or, right. Uh, to use the old uh, Lenny Clark line. No doubt. And I think that's, yeah, you're, you're an entertaining guy. Even the people who think they cover you, they're captivated by whatever it is. And then they come out to your show. It's not like it's bad. It's just, it, it's what, it's it's your style basically your thing so so i think that's kind of where he kind of got twisted on that a little bit and then and one of the things he really gets got twisted up in that that i didn't like was it was it was a fan question um it was an actual fan that sent in the video and the question and he wanted to ask about john fugel saying right do you remember that part Mm -hmm. so john john fugel saying somehow knows ray and this is, I, I might have brought this up off air or I might have brought it up on air. I can't remember. But to me, like Ray is the quintessential comedian who looks at everything and every person as a value on a hierarchy system. So if Kevin Brennan was like, hey, can you get John Fugel saying on my show? Ray would be like, yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And do it instantly. But you mm-hmm. asked um, if you could get him because you're deeply involved into the same ideology of politics and you do a show very similar in the same vein of that. And he's, there's no way he's lifting a finger to, to, you know, to ask a favor or help you out. And the guy who sent the question knew this, he knows Ray very well. So he wanted to like, see what Ray's response to it was. And I wanted to see what, like what your thoughts were on that kind of too. To be fair to Ray, he did give me John Fugelsang's contact information. Okay. So he said he Twitter, did, right? Oh, he did? No, I mean, I, I he gave me, I'm, I'm not going to go okay. into specific details yeah, of good, what good. happened afterward, but he he did, he, he is owed, he, he is kind of owed an attaboy there. For okay, that. good, good. He did, he did help me out. So there's, so, there, there's hope then. I mean, so here, here's my philosophy. If someone does something good for me, And like, if they've helped me out along the way, I remember that I'll give you a few examples. Here's a, uh, uh, comedian I work with. I I won't, uh, uh, won't mention his name, but he would sort of hit me to when certain comedians would say things about me or whether there was one, one booker who was sharing a rather unflattering video about me over and over again. Mm Is someone talking shit about me and he was sharing it over and over again. This guy said, uh, Hey, just watch out for this guy. He's doing this to you. And then I checked his, I checked the guy's, uh, Facebook page. Yeah, he was doing, I, I verified the authenticity of it. Mm -hmm. Um, and this guy who was doing it turned out to be a real dirt bag Mm -hmm. and he's been ostracized from the, from the local comedy scene ever since. Um, this, uh, friend of mine who helped me out, fell down a certain social media rabbit hole circa 2016 and 2017 and completely cut off all ties with me and people who think like me. So like ideologically, this one comic and I, like we could have like a, a verbal war to the death, like over social media, like people are you in uh, comments online, but for him helping me out with that and for him, hipping me to what was going on, I will be, I'm forever, forever grateful. grateful. Right. It's like, like, I'll give you, I'll give you another couple examples. Um, when I was starting my podcast, hmm. I asked, uh, Robbie Goodwin, who's a friend of mine. Um, uh, he does a podcast of his own, how I could yeah. distribute my podcast to get on all the platforms. Cause the previous one I worked for, they just put it on SoundCloud and well, yeah, 
I won't go in there. <laughs> Spotify. <Yeah. laughs> but no, it was all, he, he helped me out. He, he helped me out greatly with that. Like, here's what I do, all that. So, like I said, I'm good friends with him. Even if we have a falling out, I'm, I'm grateful to him. I'm grateful to him for that. Uh, I am also very thankful to Luis J. Gomez because I was asking about how I could find a theme song for my podcast. And he told me to go ahead and look on just any site where you can buy public domain clips because artists will go ahead and record stuff on a yeah, various instruments and you can buy one. I found one. I use it for the podcast. So mm -hmm. I it's like I, guys like this comic, mm -hmm. who I won't name Robbie Goodwin, uh, Louis J. Gomez. I am, I'm, I'm forever in their debt as a result of that. Just, I'm always going to be uh, grateful to them for that. Just like I'll, just like I'm, I'm grateful to Ray for, he got me uh, John Fugel Sang's contact information. And let, let's, Let's go let's, hypothetical here. Let's better. Let's, let's say better if it, let's say if I if if a hypothetical comic who goes on a hypothetical like-minded left-wing hypothetical podcast somehow blows up and becomes a very hypothetically famous hypothetical uh, comedian, right. then the hypothetical comic who helped out the hypothetical now successful comic is always in said hypothetical comics debt. Hypothetically, right, 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 right. right. You sound no, no, very I'm, noble. I mean, and it's it's one of those things that it's hard to even say. Like you can say it for yourself, like you're grateful and you're in debt to someone. But honestly, like just helping someone out feels good, right? Yeah. When you when you help someone else out, mm -hmm. you feel good about yourself, knowing like, hey, someone asked me a question of like, how do I'm sure Lewis when he when you asked him like, hey, how do I get like a good tune for my podcast? And he's like, well, this is how you do it. It probably is nothing to him. But at the same time, you oh, probably felt you. good once you were like, hey, man, this is awesome. Uh, you have to throw the word doggy in there because it is Lewis. Doggy. Doggy, <laughs> right. doggy. No. here's what you got to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, but wow. yeah, no, so, so you're, you're, you're familiar and you're, I love how you're talking about the gratitude of like these guys helping you out and they're like, you remember them. And Robbie Goodwin's a good dude too. Uh, we oh, had absolutely. his old partner, uh, Dalton on for an interview after he'd been man. a, he had, he had been off the internet for a long time. He came and did our yeah. show, and he's a fascinating guy. Now, I think they're doing a show together again. So, oh, um, good. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember uh, hearing Keith Olbermann talk about this as well, where he talked about <laughs> how um, when he, he first learned how to use a teleprompter from, of all people, Stuart Varney, who's now on Fox Business. He says, and he was up against the gun. He had to learn how to use a teleprompter. Keith Olbermann did. And Stuart Varney taught him how to use a teleprompter. And says, so, like, again, ideologically, they could go at each other's throats. All but day. he's always, he's he's grateful to Stuart Varney for, for that. He It's a liberal who's grateful to a conservative for helping him. You know, get you know what that is, um, it's, hmm? it's humans being nice to humans. That's what it is. It's, huh? just, it's just humans being nice to humans. Oh. That's what it and, is. Honestly. And, oh, I'm I'm hoping Chow comes back because I, I made a I'm making a really good point that I think he'd be he'd be interested in. But I'm well no, he'll, he'll probably watch. Here, you, later, you're you're but... I mean, you can do it. You you can <laughs> film for, for dead I air, the, man. I do the same shit all over again, you know. It's uh, it's in my blood. But no, also go ahead, what, go ahead. what what Keith Olbermann was saying was is that the story of one success in entertainment or you know, what, whatever, whether it's in TV news and TV sports and TV, like he was in, right. or whether it's comedy or whether it's just strictly podcasting. Like if your story is about people who held you back, all about people who held you back instead of the people who helped you, he said, that is really sad. Right. <laughs> I, like, I thought you froze what me. What happened? <laughs> I, was, uh, I was I was allowing the you know the crescendo, the epic yeah. end of the monologue to kind of roll out, just allowed to really hit people and just to kind of take in what you said there because that deserved a moment of silence for everyone watching and listening to this because we so hear some people tell my my entire act is all about moments of silence. So I mean, right, I'm, right. I'm used to it. No, it's beautiful. Like I applaud to that because it's just shown beauty and humanity. You know, it doesn't matter if you're black, white, you know, Latino, whatever, left, right. 
human helping human and that's what matters the most in this life and i think like what, what we were talking about with with ray like his whole thing seems to be people who he feels are trolling him and and hurting him mm -hmm. and less about people who are who are helping him and that's what i in a way like in, in my own layman's mind and well I've been around comedy for more than 20 years and I've seen a lot of really fucked up people. So that's my, my uh, bachelor's degree in history qualification in terms of human behavior. Plus I took two semesters of psychology once in high school and one college. So I, I think I, I, I might know a teensy bit of something. Right. Wise words, wise words, man. So <laughs> what about, uh, okay. Another hypothetical. Um, who do you have higher on your power rankings uh, for beauties? Um, Melania Trump or who should I go for on the should I go Jill Biden or should I go Hil HRC Hillary Rodham Clinton? Dude, Hillary was bad back in the day. She was. She was a dime. In their prime. Like yeah, in their prime. Does Melania Trump even exist anymore, or <laughs> did she just like I, I, I want I want to know what the hell's happened to her? Like when when Trump buried his first wife on his golf course, right? Did, did she just like Melania? I mean Melania or Mercedes, whatever your name is, look over there because he's spending Trump is spending a lot more time with this new lawyer of his, uh, Alina Haba. I, I don't know that one. I'm oh, so out she, of the politics. Is she a dime? She could very well be Mrs. Trump number four. Number four? The first Mrs. 44. Trump. 44. The 44, first. Hey. Or 45. Is he, what yeah, is he president? 45. 45, yeah. Uh, he, he could be, she could be the first Mrs. Trump to be given conjugal visits. <laughs> nah, dude. Don, Don, <laughs> Don's a, Don's a, he's, He's running stuff. They cut. They don't call him the Golden Don for nothing. <laughs> no, but uh, with the with the politics coming up, uh, the election. What? I guess I don't even know enough. I, I'm so out of the of what's what's the latest. But is that still you're the, lucky. the case? Is that you're the lucky. case? I got a fucking headache reading this. <laughs> reading this stuff. Is it still that Don is uh in trouble with the um the his lawsuits and all that stuff. I mean, his lawsuits, the uh, the criminal stuff. I mean, he does seem to be he he does seem to be like not good at getting he, he, not caught. Yeah, right. Not not good at getting away with stuff because, right. like, like 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 most people in his position or of his mindset. He can't stop talking about how great all of the things he's done that he says he's done are. So, uh, you know, that that appears to be his that could be his uh, that that's his Achilles the hubris. Heel. Yeah, what, it's bringing what, a heat to him. What's your take yeah. on Robert F. Kennedy running as third party? Do you like that since he's been ousted, ousted from the Democratic Party for running? What's your take um, on that? I used to like Robert F. Kennedy Jr. And then somewhere along the line, he got involved in a lot of the anti-vax stuff. And because he used to be really big on like, environmental protection, like stuff that Democrats actually cared about. And now he his PAC or his group was criticized for using like his uncle and his father or something in an ad for the Super Bowl. Like his, yeah. his own family came out and said, uh, this fucker's nuts. Uh, we haven't spoken to him in a few Christmases and a half. So, uh, th th he does not represent the good name of the Kennedy family, which is saying something. <laughs> he's been, he's been on that vaccine thing for like a long time though. Cause I remember I seen him on Corolla. Uh, I used to watch uh, Adam Corolla's show like 10, 15 years ago. And he came on and he was talking about long before even the Rona came around. So, like he, yeah, he's got something. It's it's interesting when you think of these, like a family like the Kennedys, which has all this crazy history to it. And then there's one that's kind of running for president. I wish Kanye would run again. I just vote for him again, uh, just like last time. But 
I think he, if we had Kanye as president, that'd be the, the best. Uh, but would it be Kanye or which one of the voices in his head would be doing stuff? Because <laughs> from about 2017 to 2021, we had a guy who was just kind of, but, but that was the one guy. We knew, we knew that guy. We knew what was coming from one day to the next. Right. With Kanye, we don't know what the fuck is coming. <laughs> That's true. Amazing. But uh, so Tom, so like, what was going to ask you though? So well, when you see uh, Joe Biden, Donald Trump finally running for the third time and everything like that, do you think that's going to cause more civil d- discourse? I guess once the election comes in and either party, you know, doesn't get their person they want in, like let's say Trump doesn't make it, do you think there's going to be even worse discourse within the whole entire country? Once all that kind of happens, or you think it's going to not be as insane as they're kind of building it up to be? Oh, I think I think it's a given that it's going to be. It's things aren't going to get uh, better because I used to get with uh, uh, when Trump lost, and uh, people would tell me, "Oh, well, now that Trump's gone, you're go- you're going to have to turn around and turn your guns on Biden because you know the Trump's gone. You want anything else to talk about?" And I'm like, "Well, yes and no. I mean, the the people who were uh, the people who supported Trump clearly aren't. Well, Trump didn't go away. He's running again. So that's that. that Any one, yeah. What can I tell and you? If, yeah, he he won before. He very well. He very well could do it again. And and I, I've also I've come out and publicly like, disagreed with uh, Biden like on specifically lifting the. Uh, lifting the medical recommendations for covid i thought he recommended he, he did it way too he did it a lot earlier than than he should have because he did it and then we had i think the different variants come about yeah. and like we could have had like we could have had the situation we have now where covid is here it's here to stay but it's not as bad as it was four oh, years ago days. to the day we were talking about let's close schools for two weeks and see if that and and see if that fits we could have had what we have today in the summer of 2021 but there's pol- there's political pressure he was a new president honeymoon phase was pretty much over from the day he took office cuz with a situation like that you have to really be on top of things right and i i think the political pressure made him just lift all this stuff uh, too early so i disagree with him you know heavily on that i'm not like whatever Joe Biden does is great because he's Joe Biden. And uh, right. oh, yeah, by the way, Joe Biden. Woohoo. Like, no, I'm not. P- people think I'm like that. But uh, no, you seem more level headed than that. I don't think you're freaking just yes, man, saying just whatever, like a puppet or anything like that. You have your own thoughts and ideas. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, no, I, I, have own, I have my own thoughts. I have my own right. ideas. I know what you're saying. Yeah. So I do appreciate that. Well, I was going to ask you, though. So when it comes to your political podcast, though, when you're talking about, uh, Let's say that joke just went right over your head. I just literally just <laughs> no, 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 no. You're good. You're good. We're, we're, we're idiots. I'm, I'm, pretty so. dumb. <laughs> I, I'm not a comedian at all. I'm amongst so. my crowd. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> I'm not a comedian, also. You know what I'm saying? It's just gonna go right over my head. Man. <laughs> all right. I'm at least I can guy. admit it. At least I can admit it. But I, I want to ask you though. So when it comes to your with your uh, podcast, oh. So, when you're seeing the election year right now, kind of just ramping up pretty hardcore, you know, do you see a huge tick in your followers and your subscribers and just your views in general? You know what I'm saying? Or is it kind of more level steady overall throughout? Or is this like a really like opportunistic, you know, for your, your guys' podcast? I really don't see any correlation. Some weeks we have, great listens some weeks we don't uh, i've tried to look at like what the topic was that uh that particular week like if if there's a particular guest that we have on or a particular panelist i have because i have a lot of regular panelists if there's a panelist that people mm. like or or don't like i mean i've always I've, I've always just tried to write stuff i have a format for uh the i have a format for the podcast I follow it uh, pretty stringently, so okay. I mainly focus on that, not focus so much on oh the ratings and everything and everything, because then I become like a corporate minded guy and I lose my, I, I lose my creativity. Okay, and I, I I don't like to get all bogged down in that kind of stuff. Right, I right. could have two million listeners next week, and I still wouldn't <laughs> give a shit. I'm like, okay, 
what am I doing for this next episode? Yeah, I got to So it's like I, I'm trying to I'm just trying to, you know, do a show and uh, just do a show and live, man. That's do something you're passionate about, you know, and you're you're into the creating part. Yeah, that's the thing, because like sometimes it's Mir's. This is Mir's channel. And I've peeked in the back before and looked at some of the analytics of like what demographic of ages and stuff that people and then I'm just kind of like, we're not even it, we're doing it for fun, you know, so like. Yeah. Yeah, we could try to be like, oh, we're going to do this and this and that. But that's like a marketing mindset. And that's good for some things, but not for creating, you know, you know? I fucking hate doing this. And then I'd be like, oh, I'm good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want to you don't want to. Yeah, I hate I hate marketing. I hate doing the analytics and stuff like that. My friend, uh, another comedian named Dan Fritchie, I'm going to paraphrase what he said. But it said something along the lines of he would get detracted and say, oh, how could you do this? Like, you don't really have that many views or followers. And I would just go, well, I'm terrible at self-promotion. And you follow, you listen to the same three comics all the time, no matter what. So, you know, your, so, opinion, yeah. <laughs> your opinion isn't worth dick. Basically. Right. So. So, so what is your schedule like on your show? Do you do it? Do you have a... Uh, regular routine of like so I'm, I'm sorry i'm not super familiar with your podcast but do you do it like is it it comes out as it comes out or do you try to do it certain days at certain times or i usually record on uh i, I usually record tuesday evenings if i can um uh, i record it around six i record around six o'clock i try and start at six eastern time on the dot because that's when my podcast mainstays, uh, Jeff Heisen, uh, Gina Brown, uh, Michelle Wojcikowski, they come in from uh, where I am in the D.C. Uh, Baltimore area. Um, we have another uh, uh, performer, uh, Polite Kitty. She comes in uh, from the West Coast. Uh, every once in a while, I'll have comics come from uh, comics or just even non-comedians, like political friends of mine. Uh, from when I worked on political campaigns, they'll come on and be guests or whatever. So it just depends on that. So I do that Tuesday. I do the editing. I decompress on Wednesday. Just right, that, doing cool. editing and whatnot. And it drops on my Patreon Thursday morning at uh, midnight. Just for okay. the um, for a certain level of subscriber. Uh, it's like like they get them and then they for a few hours later it goes up for everybody else on wherever you get your podcasts and it's integrated with my youtube channel as well so you get a a, a youtube version of well which it's it's a very small segment of the listens because hardly anybody listens to podcasts on youtube they'll go to spotify or right uh, go to spotify or itunes app, app. yeah <laughs> no that that's the thing uh I've heard like the most important thing for doing this is the consistency and regularity at a certain time. Like yeah, when like you get in that show. routine. Yeah. Cause people, people get into routines with their shows like oh, every day. You. I know when I listen to podcasts, like certain ones come out in certain days and you're like, Oh, I'm going to go listen to this one yep. and then while I'm working or whatever. So no, that, that's, that's the only reason I was kind of drilling you on that. Just, just curious what your yeah, yeah. process mm -hmm. was on that. So Tom, would you ever have, routine. Tom, yeah, would you ever have Ray on your show ever by any chance since you and him kind of rekindled your relationship to some extent? Um, like just to talk to him maybe and to see where you guys are at now, but bygones be bygones, you know, kumbaya. I like a little bit of predictability. <laughs> <laughs> like I, the, 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 well, the way, the way the show works, like it's not just to sit down. Like there, there is like a brief interview segment. But then right. what we do during the show is we go ahead and show video clips relating to the various topics uh, that we discuss. And then we discuss the video clips. So uh, like it starts off, I do an opening monologue. I introduce mm -hmm. my panel. I chat with the panel a little bit. I introduce the guest if I have one. I chat with the guest about topic X for a little bit. We play videos related to topic X. And then... I say thank you. We wrap up within an hour, and then I edit it to come to bring it down to uh, twenty nine minutes. And I save the extended version uh, for the uh, Patreon folks. So gotcha. I mean, it's it's a very regimented podcast. I'd like to do one where I just sit and bullshit with people. Do a special but, or something, yeah. 
yeah, like an I after mean, show or something, maybe where yeah. it's like a hang, you know. <laughs> but uh, well, that's the thing. Like Ray's a stream of conscious, like nonsense yeah. type guy, like comedy. It's I don't think he would do well in a structured like, oh, we're gonna debate this, uh, the findings of this investigation no, he, or whatever. He's, he's be done like, news clips before though. Like you know, remember he used to do that shit on this show. He do news clips about murderers. And oh, talk but about he, the yeah, headlines. but he gets all spun around and. Starts yeah, repeating Tom himself. Would be there. Tom, <laughs> yeah. Tom would be there to correct the ship. And be no like, one, right. no one, no one, my luck. It'd be like, here's what the murderer did. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, out, I, I, comedian Tom Myers was decapitated in a uh, I don't, I don't, somewhere. No, wrong. you'll be in that bag like that one YouTuber did. Remember that shit that that kind of that kind of happened recently. I think his son or something decapitated his father oh, and put him on YouTube. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah his, that was his fucked son up. fought his. his the, the guy worked for the federal government. Yeah. And so the son thought he was part of the deep state and he decapitated <laughs> him live. Yeah. That's just, that's gnarly. That, that's how I to address your earlier question. That's how I know shit is not going to get better. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, I understand. <laughs> and well, but the other getting back to that is, is that I live in a very conservative County in a very liberal state. Is it scary? Um, well, the first year that Obama ran for uh, office, yeah. and one of the one of the uh, uh, one of my neighbors had an Obama sign in his yard, and because oh. like all sorts of in that particular area, like signs for Democrats get stolen, just like in heavily Democratic right. areas. Like Trump, Trump signs will be stolen, which I'm against both because you're taking someone's property right, and whatnot. Yeah. Like leave like yard signs and flags alone, no matter who they belong to. But someone uh on on my street sprayed uh no bama because that was a big thing. No bama if you were against or Obama nation no or uh, no bama nation like that, but they said no bama, no, and then the n-word. Like they actually spray painted it. <laughs> on the street so that was going on in 2008 and so there's a lot of like ugly sentiment out there but it was kind of below the surface like it wasn't really out there in the open and what's happened since 2015 and 2016 and it's gotten worse since is that that kind of attitude has been given uh, a megaphone and it's it's now close to mainstream and it was like, unfortunately, you you do tend to hear some of it filtered through in some in in some podcasts. No, no, like it, you no, hear, it's, go ahead, you so, hear disinformation and uh, just stuff. Like I said earlier, stuff that's been proven to be not true. Well, no, it's um, crazy to me you're saying that because, like, I was telling Alice Hamilton, uh, but that's another guest we had on yesterday. Like, there's freaking now Nazi clips of Adolf Hitler in English popping up all over the place. There's millions and millions of views. And people are like, yeah, this is how it should be. You know, it's just like, damn, okay. Didn't know this was a thing. There's just millions and millions of people commenting, liking it, sharing it. Well, there's, a, there's a podcast by uh, that uh, Rachel Maddow did. And she's since written a book about it. The podcast is called Ultra. And she details a plot by <laughs> Nazi Germany in the mid to late thirties and early forties that they actually infiltrated certain politicians, like elected officials, like congressmen, senators, like the Bushes. Um, I don't know about the, I don't know about the Bushes, but like some well, very prominent people back in the day, like Charles Lindbergh, like we think, Oh, he was so great. He flew across the, he flew across the ocean, a plane. What a hero. That's no, Lindbergh. He was a Nazi sympathizer. Yeah. He loved, he loved Hitler. He got an honorary, honor from him i think don't don't quote me on yeah, some no. american guy. but it was uh an attempt to try and dissuade uh franklin roosevelt from getting involved in helping uh england fight the nazis and that she wrote a book about it rachel maddow wrote a book about it called prequel which from i haven't read it yet which i'm looking forward to from what i understand it goes into much greater detail and much more okay disturbing detail so it's it's happened before like history is kind of repeating itself now where we have uh a, a pro clan pro nazi just pro racism kind of filtering into into, the, into america uh, american society yeah i didn't realize she was that old bro 
She was around back then. <laughs> even it's like that one dude who just died, Kissinger or whatever. I, the dude died of he, what? He's been around for it. Yeah, yeah he was yeah. A, he's an OG. He was, he was part of the uh, China, opening up China in the seventies. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah he was, no, uh, one of uh, Nixon's guys. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, no, it's it's wild, and yeah, when you study, because I say I was telling Alice this last night, like I'm beyond politics. I've 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 done all the stuff through I've I've studied every conspiracy and I know like how the deck gets restructured every 72 years and everything repeats bro so like yeah that's how it does work over time like all time there's a flat circle that repeats you know so when you get some of it it's like you can learn from the history and you can kind of forecast or foreshadow certain things whether it be markets or you know impact uh high high novelty events and different things and it's like ultimately you can get caught up in some of it with the politics stuff or you can like it's where you 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 only have so much attention in your life uh kind of like time so like to me i like try to dedicate it towards since me and me are we have kids and families and stuff like that so i try to like dedicate more of it to that than like getting so much on on team uh politics right now but yeah Cause you can, people get real riled up about Dude, it sometimes I met too. Crazy fucking people off that shit, man. I was like, like, uh, not to say where I work or anything like that, but you know, we do some things, and there's some crazy motherfuckers. Private chat here, private chat. <laughs> yeah, there's there's, there's, <laughs> there's just some crazy motherfuckers, do that believe in crazy shit. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Are you religious by any chance, Tom, or no? Um. Uh, I was raised Catholic. The only Catholic thing that I do is like I'll children. Like, what? No. <laughs> None that I know of. Cheap joke. Uh, cheap joke. Cheap joke. Shows in Vegas. Hey, I'm and, Catholic uh, too, buddy. So it's all right. I get it. <laughs> but I mean, like if, if there's an ambulance going in the background, like I'll do something or if someone. Right. Like, you show respect. I, yeah. And I won't eat meat on Good Friday. Oh, okay. Will, oh, okay. And that's Just, something. That's uh, random, I know, but yeah. I, <laughs> that is really I, random. Why are you just like fuck it and there's no meat? <laughs> yeah, that that well, I didn't grow up Catholic, and I I know some about it. It's it's very ritual based. Um, there's some there's some good stuff. There's some bad stuff. Um, yeah, I shouldn't no, say I, I shouldn't say good or bad, but there's some pros and cons to it, of course. No, you know. they're, they're good and bad. No, there's like, there's like relics of safety. Like, I just bought a used car, and, and randomly, I just saw there was a relic, you know, kind of tucked away in the car, or some, you know, some spot. I was just like, you know what? Not moving that. It's probably there for a reason, and I'm a little superstitious, so leave that alone. Well, I, I tell you what, my mother, I, I get the Catholic from my, my mother. She got it from uh, her mother, who was first yeah. generation Austro-Hungarian uh, like they came to the country, they were staunch Catholics uh, over there. Uh, my mother gave my cat, who I've had for 15 and a half years, a St. Francis of Assisi uh, collar metal pin thing to put on his collar. Mm. During the time that he has had that St. Francis of Assisi, because he's the patron saint of animals, of, of pets. Right. Touch wood, his checkups have been phenomenal at his age, which is. There you go, dude. dude. It's, it's your stuff like that, man. Those, yeah. th- those like, uh, like, uh, grandmas that are into Catholicism, dude, they live forever, man. Like, something about, like, the practice of, like, the, uh, whatever they, when they Rendry. get really into it and whatever the, whatever the rituals they do. Cause I have a grandma who's Catholic and she's like, almost a hundred bro <laughs> wow yeah she, she, she's just like wow. and she's just like i don't know what it is about the rituals once you get older maybe or something about it of like it keeps you going basically maybe i don't know i'm just there's i'm just always a diet, theorizing bro. this now like there's always a diet like she, she drinks like two glasses of pear juice every day a glass of wine at night eats a yogurt and two strips of very lean bacon or something like that like there's always some there's always a diet thing involved right like uh, a little bit of chocolate maybe yeah 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 so and then we were talking about our hoes and all that type of stuff but uh (laughs) um are you you got you got a lady right now are you you flying solo um i've been on dates but we'll just we'll just put it that way just a little bit it's going good all right yeah Mm -hmm. there there, there's been 
this <laughs> I'm I'm still I'm still friends with them. So there have been some even broke their hearts yet then. In, in, in the past year, let's just say in the past 15 months, mm-hmm. there has been some dates. Uh, yeah. There has been some action. Hey, that's All what right. I want to hear. That's, we'll leave it at that. We'll leave it at that. Yeah, you're we're, gentlemen, I'm, we keep I'm, it. I'm good friends with all of them. Again. <laughs> maybe after they see this shit, maybe not. Who knows? Right, 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 exactly. <laughs> that's the thing. You got to try to figure out. I, we're trying to figure out. Uh, Sometimes we ask people like what because the game changes so fast. Like no, where do like, you are you pick up women and where and then how with the internet nowadays? Like sometimes there's like a hot app that like everyone's using, then it changes to like wait. everyone goes to bars or in person or like Do- I don't know. It's doggy like style looks huge in the eighties and now people <laughs> like being cut and shit. Like yeah, I don't know, you know, it was like shit <laughs> is so much. You never well, know. if there's any group of people who can solve the issue of what women like, it's three straight cisgendered white men on a podcast at 11:30 at night. So exactly, we're, that's it. We're cooking now. That's right. But I think it might be time to cut down though, because it, like you said, it is at 11:30 at night. It's getting pretty late here. Uh, Chowder, was there anything else you want to include on the interview at all, sir? By any chance? No, I mean we can uh, throw it out there to Tom if there's anything he wants to touch on. Yeah, you know, but uh. Perfect. Yeah, I mean, no, I, I had, I had, I had a lot of fun. Like I said, I, like I said before, I rarely like go on podcasts like this just because I'm so busy with my own. I don't right. really focus on, uh, on, on, on others. Like I said, I like to sort of compartmentalize my, like my, my baseball announcing, my yeah. stand up comedy. There my, you go. Hey, hey, look at the screen podcast. real quick. Ray oh. Rose. This is what you got to do. You got to roast Ray. Oh, well, a- according to Ray, I don't do any real comedy shows where I get to make money. So I'm afraid <laughs> I don't qualify for that. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. I can't. Um, you know, it's, it's that's something we can set up in the future. But uh, sorry oh. to interrupt you. You're talking you're giving us praise and say or well, you're saying you're, <laughs> you, you were saying that you like with all your busy schedule, you don't really gassed on a lot of shows, but. You, you came on ours. Like I, said, like I said, I I saw the, the someone sent me the clip of you guys, and I I did my vetting, I did my homework, yeah. and I said these are uh, these are two solid guys right here. Like these are some these are some good peeps. So you know I I I, I feel like I got a I feel like I had a I had, I had a good time here. So thank you, but, sir. And, and you know like like I said, I figured this is something which I could easily come on and address and have a little fun in the process. So, uh, absolutely, man. Tom, you're an honor, sir. Thank you. I just loved your presence, man. You're just so amazing. Truly appreciate you, dude. And also right. all Again, the best. And thank you for, thank you for reading that exactly as I wrote that in the exact inflection that <laughs> you're I gave a fucking, <laughs> you should run for president one day. All I gotta say. Oh, fuck. No, no, no. Uh, oh, no. Let's, let, let's, let's ask that as one last question. Is that something that you'd ever want to get involved with is like being in public involved, office? I've been involved in political campaigns for 10 years. I ran in two elections. I won one. Oh, oh shit. Well, when I was when I was well, aside from that one, when I was in sixth grade, I ran for student government association homeroom representative, and I won. So that was like I had, <laughs> I had the politics thing in there. But uh, no, I mean I like what I do now, and uh, yeah, it's why would I want to change that? Why want to right. fuck it up? Well, we'll keep track of you over the years as you keep building and doing what you do, and uh, hopefully you can do it again sometime, man. If, if I you do win, what cabinet position you want? Because I got you on this one. Uh, <laughs> what? Maybe <laughs> should, I'll think of something. Maybe something in. Te- is there something like interior or something that kind of like that? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, or maybe like maybe make me a general in the army or something. I'll I don't say. <laughs> Put, put now we're in getting into dic- now we're getting into dictatorship. Right? I would yeah. say I would say put me in an embassy embassy somewhere, man. As long as that, not that, Haiti, that, we'll be straight. Cow general will lead to him doing a coup and then <laughs> decapitating me on the White House lawn. That's what there, that's going to go. lead to. Yeah, no doubt. We'll 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 plan that out when it comes. Uh, gives us something <laughs> to think run, about for next time. Cool bridge when we get to it. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, and then you want to give us a a shout out to your where to find your show? 
Yeah. Um, my website is Tom Myers dot us uh, spelled M Y E R S. Uh, the podcast is called Tom Myers versus the rest of the world. Uh, a new episode just dropped today, actually. Uh, it's wherever you find your podcasts. Also on my Patreon. Uh, go ahead and subscribe. You can listen to episodes ad free. You can get extended versions, bonus clips. And you can also listen to the new episodes before they drop on your podcast platforms. It's also on my YouTube channel, which you can listen to there because I'm trying to get the listens for the monetization thing. I don't know what that means. I'm a technological idiot, but I'm told a lot of views <laughs> is a good thing and monetization helps. So Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. But yeah, you can, in addition to on the, uh, on the uh, podcast platforms, uh, there's a little, uh, uh, little box on the website a little uh, podcast player. So the new episode pops up on the, on the website as well. So I have some live stuff coming up as well. It hasn't been finalized yet, but everything is on the website as they say, watch that space. So, Hey, there you go, buddy. I love it. I love awesome, it. I love dude. it. Yes, sir. Appreciate All right, everyone. Uh, thank you for watching Dr. Chow as thank you so much for, you know, helping me out with this shit as always. And Tom, thank you for being such a great guest, sir. I really do appreciate you. Thank you for, awesome. uh,